Hi, it's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for another double feature Friday. And this week, in honor of Valentine's Day, which is just around the corner, I thought I would talk about uh, two films that sort of are about killer couples. So this is maybe a killer couples part two. Those two films are Badlands and The Sugarland Express. <laughs> Alright, so let's start with Badlands. This film was released in 1973, directed by Terrence Malick, and I think this was technically his directorial debut. He, According to the internet, he had directed a short film prior to this one, but I think this was his official first feature-length film. It stars Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, and it is a wonderful film about a young couple on a killing spree. I do want to just put this disclaimer out there. There are some animal, uh, dead animals in the first uh, maybe 20 minutes of this film. None of it's that graphic, um, but if you're not into seeing dead cows being stood on by Martin Sheen or a living catfish being thrown in the garden. That being said, it all happens right at the beginning. This film is stunning and I think it's still worth a watch, but that's just me. Badland stars Martin Sheen as Kit, a sort of like ne'er-do-well drifter young man who I think is just unsatisfied in life. At the beginning of the film, he's working as a garbage collector and then he gets fired and he gets a job at the feedlot where he is murdering cows. And I think he's just kind of directionless and not happy with how, where his life is going. And he meets Sissy Spacek, uh, her character Holly, who's just this young, uh, innocent, fragile teenager. And he becomes infatuated with her and wants to date her. Um, her father says no. In retaliation, he comes back and kills the father, and then the two of them end up being on the run. Okay, first off, I'm not a huge Terrence Malick fan. The only other film I've watched of his was Tree of Life, and if I'm going to be completely honest, it turned me off of him. <laughs> I found it was too long and maybe too pretentious or too abstract. I did not enjoy it. But this film is not at all like that. It is very straightforward. It's based on true events. This film also is just so beautifully shot. Also, the actors do a great job. Sissy Spacek is just like the perfect embodiment of fragility and innocence narration throughout the film which I actually really like. It gives sort of like this insight into her character and it's really interesting. I can't really tell if her character is so naive that she doesn't really understand the extent of what is happening or the ramifications of Kit's actions or if she's just sort of in this trauma state of justifying what's happening or sort of explaining it away. It's really interesting and she just does a wonderful job. She, there's nothing better than watching a young, young sissy space like in my opinion. Her, just even her look, she's so interesting and just like has this natural beauty to her. Martin Sheen in this film is wonderful as well. He does a great job of sort of playing this charismatic young man. I think also the thing that's kind of interesting about his character is the way that he maybe thinks he's more charismatic than he actually is. And I really enjoy that. It's an interesting film. There's also a wonderful score which just has this really familiar, there's like a theme that plays throughout the movie and it just seems so familiar to me and it's I really enjoy it. It's very light and uplifting and it sort of contrasts with the tone of the film but at the same time you're also watching these two young beautiful people sort of just driving around South Dakota which looks amazingly stunningly beautiful in this film. There are so many shots of you know, like wide open expansive skylines and sunsets, everything is shot at the right time of day and even like the most desolate sort of wasteland-y settings look so beautiful. I recommend this film. Neither of these films are to the level of like killer couples, like Natural Born Killers or Parita Durango, like the two I talked about last time. This is definitely more low-key in terms of the violence. It's a very different tone and so 
<laughs> Let's just use that to segue right into the Sugarland Express, which this movie was directed by Steven Spielberg. It came out in 1974. It's rated PG, so this film is definitely way more low key in terms of violence. It stars Goldie Hawn and William Atherton as this couple on the lamp. I love Goldie Hawn and that's probably why I watched this movie in the first place 10 years ago. This is probably one of my absolute favorite Goldie Hawn performances. She is just so natural and so charming. She's also very much in control of what is happening, which is interesting to see like this young, delicate woman really being the driving force behind everything that's happening in this film. Her husband, who's played by William Atherton, he um, is definitely not the driving force behind the little crime spree, which is pretty interesting. So this is a film also based on true events. Goldie Hawn plays Lou Jean. She has her child taken away from her by the state and she's obviously very upset and wants to get her baby back. So she goes to break her husband out of prison. He's in the sort of like halfway house situation, but still like guarded and he's not allowed to leave, but she breaks him out and they end up in this, the whole movie is basically a police chase and they take a police officer hostage. He is, I don't remember who the actor is who plays the police officer. He sort of becomes enmeshed in this little they become like a threesome almost in terms of like working together to get their baby back. I think the thing that I really like about this film is the actual objective of the film is something so innocent as, you know, just being a mother who really wants, she feels she doesn't deserve to have her baby taken from her and she's willing to do whatever it takes to get her baby back. And maybe she's not taking the right approach, but you can see that she's maybe limited by her situation and she's doing the best that she can. And it's really just about the love of their baby. So I thought this was really sweet. This was also, I think technically the directorial debut for Steven Spielberg. Um, I think he directed, according to the internet, he directed a couple things before this, but I think they were all just made for TV movies. And then the next film that he did after this was Jaws. So as you can see, um, Badlands got a Criterion release. This film, I think we're lucky that we even just got it on this uh, Blu-ray, which was put out, I think, by Universal. I think this film deserves sort of a better release and more recognition, especially given that it's directed by Steven Spielberg. The performances are so wonderful. It also is very beautiful looking and kind of pretty comparable to Badlands in terms of, I mean, this one takes place in Texas, but I feel like the scenery, the landscape, everything feels very similar. You spend a lot of time with them driving in a car but still somehow, and this is a fairly long film too, but somehow it is, I was engaged the whole way through. I really wanted to see what was gonna happen to this couple and to their police officer hostage friend. And there's a scene where they go and eat fried chicken. There's a scene where they sort of hide their car in a used car dealership parking lot and they use an RV that's in the lot to like shower and use a washroom and sleep in a bed. Just like little details like that that I thought were really fun. And it made an interesting film. I really like both these films. I don't really know if I have anything more to say about it. If you've seen either of these films, let me know what you thought of them. I'd love to hear your take. And yeah, I think that's it for me for this week. Bye for now.